This meeting of June 24, 2013 of the Dubuque Community School District Board of Education is called to order. Our mission is to develop world-class learners and citizens of character in a safe and inclusive learning community. Roll call, please. Mr. Barton? Here. Mr. Bytean? Here. Mr. Davis? Here. Mr. Donahue? Here. Mr. Kruger? Present. Ms. Ryan? Here. Mr. Strelo? Present. I move that the Board of Education approve the agenda as submitted with removal of um, item number three. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the agenda as submitted with the deletion of item number three. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. I move that the Board of Education approve the personnel report as submitted. Second. Moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the personnel report as submitted. Any discussion? Where is that? Where? Um, that is right after. That's, so we're not approving the agenda? We moved? I mean, we already we did, did it. Oh, we did approve the agenda. Okay. I'm Remember sorry. when you said I? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Cut the tape. <laughs> and start over. If okay. you hit item one <laughs> in the left hand bar, yeah, there's no I'll play with it. Okay. Or, should be. All right, got it. We have no idea Thank about you. <laughs> Okay, it's been moved and seconded <laughs> to approve the, the personnel report as submitted. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. I move that the Board of Education approve the agreement with the food service employees as presented. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the Agreement. The agreement with the food service employees as presented. Any discussion? Is there any comments about nature of that? Nature of the agreement. It was just language in. Uh, there was no language in that in that contract. Um, it was just over money and insurance. Um, so we have. Oh. So the conversation was uh, right in line with where we were with the rest of the unions as far as uh, the uh, salaries go. Um, so really not anything. We did have some conversations about the new Obamacare and so how we're restructuring and trying to keep the hours down for certain employees who are already below 30 hours. We actually didn't, I don't believe we're cutting any hours for any of those people, but we're going to keep a watchful eye because this will be our look back period during the 13, 14 school year will be the period that they're going to look at to determine whether or not those people are 30 hours or more. I guess I would just add that Rick and his uh, group, uh, Kevin Kelleher and the folks in the business office have spent uh, an unbelievable amount of time in the last two weeks since we found out what allowable growth would be uh, for next year with all of our unions. All uh, of our contracts are being negotiated at this time, so you will see uh, several tonight and several more in the relatively near future as we near completion and prepare for next school year. What kind of set salary range or settlement range with so, these contracts it's falling in? Yeah, so this one is uh, 32 uh, cents per hour. Uh, that is a total Three, package six, six, because uh, you know, in, when we ever we negotiate, we talk about total package. And so when we talk about a percentage, we talk about the total increase in that employee group for the following year. So that includes uh, uh, health insurance premium increases. It includes um, any IPERS changes that might be included for that following year. It also, in this case, includes additional fees uh, called PACA fees, which come under um, uh, the Affordable Health Care Act, and so there are those additional costs. So as a total package percentage, it, this package is 3.67%, so just under 3.7% which translates uh, into 32 cents uh, per hour and then all those other changes that I mentioned. It's a relatively small group, 121 uh, employees that uh, run the food service for the district. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Move the Board of Education approve the agreement with the truck driver and mechanic employees as presented. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the agreement with the truck driver and mechanic employees as presented. Any discussion? Once again, can we have that? 
summary? The summary is almost identical to what we have with food service. Much smaller group there. I believe there are, Kevin, is it nine eight. people? Eight. eight. Eight people that are in that bargaining unit, so it's a smaller group. Um, right in line with the same process as far as what we went through with them and, and right in line with where we were with the other unions as far as percentage settlement. And again, the package does include the PACA fees that uh, Stan referred to as well. In, in addition to the insurance increase for those individuals. But again, we weren't talking about language with this group. This was just insurance and, and uh, the total package as far as the cost is concerned. I guess the one thing I always like to emphasize is the fact that whole total package, and again, a lot of times when you read or hear about uh, other groups, uh, whether they be uh, public employees or private uh, uh, organizations they tend to report only the percentage of salary increase and we always report total package increase which is a significant difference were there any uh, IPERS changes this year there's an increase in IPERS there was this an increase year. in IPERS uh, it goes up a small increase but Ke otherwise uh, IPERS laws as far as what we'll governance I don't believe any changes there Kevin do you know roughly percentage of salary increase it's right around I'm sorry, I wasn't talking about IPERS. The, the 41 cents per hour. 3.68 is what it says. It is a total package, but I guess I wanted to get to the salary increase, which is probably closer to 2%. Yeah, right. Correct. Right. But the 3.68 includes salary, health care, and the IPERS increases. Correct. And the PACA fees. You bet. And the PACA fees. Correct. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I move that the Board of Education cancel the purchase contract with Seneca Data for N Computing appro approved on June 10, 2013. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education cancel the purchase contract with Seneca Data for N Computing approved on June 10, 2013. Uh, discussion. Absolutely. Well, at the last board meeting, uh, we asked you to approve a uh, purchase of a virtual desktop uh, situation for our labs. Uh, there are 58, 59 labs that we are redoing this summer, and we ran a pilot using a virtual desktop situation, which is, and I will get some of the technicalities wrong here, basically multiple uh, computers using one uh, uh, tower or one uh, PC, basically. And uh, for a long time, we had some relatively good success with that. But as we neared the end of the school year, we ran it through harder trials and found that it struggled to do uh, to keep up when when streaming video, or when we have large numbers of students doing um, uh, standardized testing. So we we moved forward with the resolution for purchase at the same time as we were finalizing our um, uh, pilot so that we would be ready to execute that as soon as uh, July 1st rolled around, as soon as we were into the, to the next fiscal year. And so there was a little bit of an overlap before we finalized the pilot and, and when we made the purchase, but we wanted to be in a situation to move ahead quickly. At the end of the pilot, uh, I visited, as well as others of the executive staff, many of our schools had conversations with um, our teaching staff as well as principals, and uh, the pilot just simply didn't provide the level of experience we wanted for our students. So uh, we've had some uh, uh, other conversations about ways that we can do this better. And uh, we are looking at, and you will see some recommendations later, to look at a, uh, a it's called a tiny, so I'm not using untechnical terms when I say that, but basically a tiny, which will be mounted behind the screen uh, of a computer, but then each PC will, or each computer will act as its own PC. So it gives us much greater power. It comes at additional expense. Uh, I believe they're about $150 per computer more, but the end user experience, the ability for it to keep up with uh, changes in, in websites and video and all those things that are important to education is much, uh, much greater. Um, our IT department has, uh, spent a lot of time with this and they are recommending that we move in this direction and away from the uh, virtual desktop environment and I concur I think that that's a good uh, recommendation and the folks who have used that in the pilot are much more positive about it than uh, things ended up with a virtual desktop so uh, before we overcommitted or went down a path we were not going to be satisfied with we wanted to back up and uh, do the right thing any other questions I would point out that I believe our <clears throat> our agreement with 
um, Seneca indicated that we reserve the right um, to alter the the, uh, the purchase. Correct. The purchase order was never executed. Right. I mean, that was held until we had everything finalized, and so the, it all kind it, of collided. And the bid gives us some flexibility in uh, numbers that we would order or if. And we do have uh, some on hand that we've purchased to do our pilot with, and we will find ways to repurpose those and ensure that they are used uh, in a way that they were meant to. There are yeah, there are applications where those can be <coughs> certainly deployed throughout the district. Absolutely, not put us in a, a situation where we've got uh, technology in the hands of students and teachers that isn't performing. So. Absolutely, in a lab, our labs. You know, one of our priority uses for the lab uh, is with the new testing, or not the new testing, but the testing that we do, which is more and more the standardized test is, is computerized and that's one of the areas that struggle. We certainly can't put our students at a disadvantage by having them taking standardized tests on the technology that doesn't uh, facilitate that very well. So there are other uses in our in our media centers or such where we redeploy those uh, 200 units that we own and, and they'll, they'll perform just fine because it, it's not the same level of density of use. Um, and quite honestly, it's not this, as high level of, uh, of uh, rigor the, or of, of if it doesn't work, uh, the outcome's not quite as important as if it messes up the standardized test. You're whatever, looking for some cool whatever, technology whatever for, I was looking to use for, there that, uh, that none of us are going to understand anyway, yeah. but we know that if it works or it doesn't work. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Is there any other discussion? Just, just a question, just a clarification. The, the end computing thing, client hardware, so, uh, hardware and support management software, is that, uh, is that in lieu of, meaning that's, that's gone, I get that. Then you have these new tiny devices, mm -hmm. but the difference in price is some four hundred eighty thousand dollars. Correct. So is it is it these two things are being exchanged? Correct. But at an additional cost of nearly half a million dollars. That's correct. So what does that do? I know that's that's one cent sales tax. Yep. What does that do to our projections relative to the availability of funds going down the road? So we have maintained all of our purchases inside of the three point five million dollars that the board uh, set aside for our technology plan. So this will not cost uh, additional dollars outside of that. So it won't have impact on uh, purchases outside of our technology plan. What it will likely do is, if you remember in our technology, we had uh, indicated that we would have deployed 1,200 uh, tablets um, by the end of next year. Well, based on the reduction in the cost of those tablets and some other efficiencies we were able to find, we had hoped to, to make that 1,200 be closer to 2,000. Well, now with this, it's going to offset, and we will be back at the 1,200 mark, which was the plan in the beginning, and those other tablets will not be purchased because we will be um, purchasing these tinies, which will give us a better. So our, our plan will stay on track uh, as written. It, we had hoped to, uh, to, to go well beyond the 1,200, but that likely won't be able to happen for next year. But that's okay. That's where we were at uh, uh, from the planning purposes anyway. So. Uh, the cost or the opportunity cost is in fewer tablets than we had hoped, but still the number we had talked about in our technology plan. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> I move that the Board of Education approve a purchase contract with, and then we were given two trees technology. That is page eight and nine of the general. Okay. If you take a look at that. That was added. Um, that was a late. We had to wait for the bids to come in on Friday. So that is <coughs> has been added. Um, and the company that w had the lowest quote, I believe, was the Two Trees Technology LLC. Okay, for the, with purchase contract with Two Trees Technology for Lenovo Tiny Devices. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve a purchase contract with Two Trees Technology LLC for Lenovo Tiny Devices. <laughs> discussion, any more discussion? I guess I could jump in really quickly. The, the, so the tiny will mount behind the screen in the same way that the <coughs> virtual desktop would. Um, it will run the same programs. It will perform better, quicker, uh, able to do better streaming. But as far as the end user goes, there's no difference. It's not that the now the teachers have to learn another program or another operating system or somehow it will change the design of our labs. Really, for the end user, it's seamless. It's just something else behind the screen that's powering the technology. Two Trees Technologies from where? 
Maybe. That I don't know. I take it they're not local then? They are not local. Are they Iowa? Are they Iowa? I'm just trying to figure out why there's such a drastic difference if, if, the, if the tiniest the program that we're going to put in. There's such a discrepancy, like $40,000 with some of this. Huh? That's a lot of money. It's just a... From my understanding on that, Otto, is the Lenovo district, Lenovo would only allow packages of like 500 of them purchased by these other four vendors, where Two Trees was able to get a package where they could buy the whole 1150 at the same price. The other four were limited to 500 at a certain price. And then they had to pay more for a full oh, pack. For another 500. Two Trees was able to just secure a, a deal with a distributor for the whole amount at the lower price. That's think, why they were cheaper. Do you think maybe they're possibly like a considered a preferred distributor or yeah. something where they've got just better experience in working with Lenovo or something? Could be. That, oh, no. That was the explanation we had from yeah. Two Trees as to why their price was lower. Yep. And they're from where then? <clears throat> we can Google them quick. That'll take me about three hours to figure out how to Google them. Don't, this don't push anything on your screen. Things going to blow up <laughs> if I try and Google. from Wichita, Kansas. Uh. That was quick. Thank you. <laughs> that's why she's vice president. Exactly right. <laughs> I think that's our first Google in the middle <laughs> yeah, of the right yeah. Let's keep Split it. Time. Yeah. Where are the other There's four? The where are the other four? From? <laughs> is, there, is there any other discussion? Uh. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Move the Board of Education to approve the purchase contract with TC Networks for tablet imaging. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve a purchase contract with TC Networks for tablet imaging. Any discussion? As we purchase tablets, uh, they, they come into the district. They need to be uploaded with an image and added to our system or our domain, I think is the right term. I see some shaking heads. <laughs> um, so we don't. Uh, one way to do that is, is to purchase it at the time of purchasing um, the tablet, which as far as the image goes, we still have to add them to the domain ourselves. So one of our priorities has to be <laughs> to find ways to incorporate local uh, vendors, and this is one way that we can do that. They have the ability to uh, image those uh, uh, tablets very quickly, add them to our domain, domain and get them into the uh, carts and deliver them. For our, I'm not sure if we're delivering or if they're delivering to to, or we're going to deliver them for insurance purposes and transportation to the building. So it's a way to uh, you know, utilize local services and uh, have a, a more efficient result. I would, and I would chime in. You and I had a conversation about this, and I think it's great. You know, you were able to determine that, in essence, to keep that part of the business locally here, we could get competitive beds, bid, competitive enough bids from our local companies that it made sense to keep the business right here in Absolutely. Dubuque and in Iowa when we could. So that's 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 great. All right. Any other questions? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. All right, brings us to the featured event of this right. evening, the strategic plan update. Great. And Mike, we're going to check the lights. So we talked about in uh, several of our subcommittees how, we, how would we report uh, our progress um, on the strategic plan, what was accomplished this year, and as importantly, what wa will be accomplished uh, next year. And so we really tried to break this down into, into uh, two phases. The first is this year, the 12-13, and we're going to go through several bullet points about the 12-13 school year and where I believe we have uh, accomplished some significant uh, movement within the district. And then next year we'll talk about what our year of planning, which is what we're calling the 12-13 school year, will um, 
play out for our students, for our staff, for our parents, for the board. So we really tried to focus uh, next year on what will I see or experience differently if I'm a student, a parent, a teacher, a, an administrator, a board member. So first we'll start with the uh, this year and what have we accomplished or what have we planned. And uh, I really do think it's uh, important to, to reemphasize that uh, we wanted to be very purposeful and make sure everybody was on the same page to, to give us uh, 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 a strategic plan that's that's use, usable, actionable. You know, we've all been through strategic planning before. Oftentimes, uh, this uh, this far after the fact, nine months later, it's pretty difficult to figure out where that strategic plan is or what what it called us to do. And so, we're trying to stay focused on our strategic plan uh, on a, on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. So, one of the major accomplishments I believe of this year is to launch a new strategic plan and uh, complete a district-wide uh, rollout and, and implementation phase. Um, a second uh, accomplishment of this year is develop a long-term technology plan to increase student access to technology, prepare educators to incorporate these tools into instruction. Um, while it hasn't been uh, perfect, it certainly is a good guiding document. We will begin implementing that our strategic uh, technology plan um, on July 1st. A lot of the purchases are, are wrapped around um, uh, dollars that become available for us after the uh, fiscal year at the end of, of June. And so, again, a, a planning document that we have been hard at work uh, beginning the implementation phase uh, this summer. The wireless will be upgraded throughout 100% of the district. That will be done yet this summer. The uh, labs, the 59 labs um, at the one per elementary school, one per uh, house at the middle school, one per department at the high school and the um, uh, digital literacy labs also at the middle school. So we'll kind of come back to that next year when we talk about what we're going to implement next year or after July 1st. But I wanted to point out that this, this document has, is kind of what has kept us focused and moving that forward. I think it's going to be a major game changer for our students next year. Um, we also, as you have seen, developed a plan for future bu building projects utilizing one cent sales tax uh, funding. So we incorporated the technology. We talked about the ongoing uh, uh, building projects. We set aside some money budgetarily to look at uh, senior in the, in the future, uh, as well as a, an aquatic center uh, and other projects. So again, staying with that theme of planning, we need to be purposeful as we move forward and sometimes it takes, you know, six, eight, nine, twelve months to, to plan it so that we can be. Um, it, we also initiated discussion of a community aquatic center and started a feasibility study, so talking about uh, our uh, work with uh, other uh, entities, specifically the city in that case. Uh, we implemented the Iowa Core Language Arts Standards using LEAD 21, reading curriculum district-wide, grades K through 5. We increased the frequency and consistency of communication with all stakeholders. Uh, as you know, uh, uh, Mike Size and his team have done a, an excellent job of making sure that whether it's weather related or whether it's um, you know, a variety of things that we are communicating electronically with our stakeholders through, um, uh, uh, through relatively frequent emails. I mean, we don't want to overdo it so that people tune us out, but, but when it's important. Um, as well as texts and uh, phone messages. So we have heard from many of our stakeholders, whether they be teachers uh, or parents, that uh, the communication, they feel more in the loop as to what's happening with the district or when there are emergency situations. Develop new and continue existing involvement in community initiatives aligned with the district's strategic plan. So uh, that speaks to the fact that this morning I was the guest reader at the, uh, at the um, uh, third grade reading initiative uh, summer school program. I have uh, 47, 48 students who are enrolled in that program and uh, it's going to hopefully be, uh, that's a, it's a great collaboration between a lot of uh, elements within the, within the community and we'll, we'll get to that later as well. And then focused on creating a greater sense of collaboration across the district. One of the things that uh, I think I shared with the, with the board when I started this position is I felt a need to drive home the idea of collaboration, um, that buildings weren't sort of out there on their islands by themselves, but that there be uh, a feeling of uh, collaboration, of give and take uh, within the district, um, whether it be at the administrative level, teacher level, but also from the, from the uh, school board uh, level. 
uh, parent level. You know, one of the things that you'll see at your desk is a copy of a, of a book. That one of the things we're going to we talked about at the end of our uh, year as an administrative team was how do we continue to encourage people to think outside the box, or in this case, to poke the box and to uh, to um, make sure everybody feels invited. I think I stole yours, Mike. <laughs> um, so it, those are sort of the big picture issues where I believe we've been successful this year, and, and it's really in planning for next year and setting the right um, cultural uh, experience so that everyone feels part of a team, everyone feels they have a, uh, an ability to be heard and a right to be heard, that good ideas um, come from a variety of ways and that there are uh, avenues to express those, those ideas, whether they come from a building principal or whether they come from a teacher to a building principal to the forum, but that uh, we have uh, uh, that we are actively trying to create that environment. I know it doesn't happen in one year, it may take uh, some time and, and the proof will be in the pudding. They'll bring forth ideas and they'll wait and see if they gain any traction, but, but they will. And so those are sort of uh, where I believe we have accomplished some, some big goals during the 12-13 school year. So that's really the front of your sheet. Uh, initially, we had talked about just presenting the, the, the back of your sheet. We thought, well, no, we need to back up and talk about this year. What were the, what were the major uh, accomplishments of this year and you'll see a lot of it has to do with planning so the next year has to be about implementation it's easy to plan it's easy to I shouldn't say it's easy to plan but it, it's easy to get stuck in the the habit of planning and never bring things to, to fruition or never to, to execute told Mike tells me not to use the word execute to implement uh, the plan uh, that has been uh, has been developed so now what I want to do is move into the 13 14 and then talk about the priority initiatives and how we're going to implement those. So if you remember um, our strategic plan, I'm sure you all do, and then you remember our strategic plan update that we gave you last time in uh, midwinter, it had a lot of, of data and statistics, some of which we had current data, some of which we were taking a year uh, to, to develop that data. And so what I'm going to share with you tonight is not the data, that will come next year when we report out again in our yearly cycle. What I want to report is that step below the data. In other words, what are we going to do differently to in, begin to improve that data? Um, it's, it's one thing to look at the numbers, but it's also important to look at what are the steps that we take proactively as a district to improve that data. Um, and some of these things are, are um, easier to implement than others, but uh, we're, we're committed to figuring out how do we move that, that data forward. So that's what I want to start with uh, tonight and certainly open to questions uh, as we go. Um, I know I can tend to talk too much, so as we get moving forward, please uh, feel free to stop me. Okay. <laughs> we are going to start. <laughs> We'd like to start with student development. We, you'll see that we move student achievement to the end uh, because we believe that everything that we're going to talk about in our other four goal areas supports or improves student achievement. So we want to wait and talk about that at the end. Um, so I thought I would go through and talk about the three, four, in some cases five major initiatives under each of the goal areas. and. Um, I guess paint a little bit of picture on how we believe that will uh, increase student uh, achievement or student involvement. So the first one is student development and uh, under the major uh, uh, actions you'll see is offer an activities bus that provides transportation to 612 students participating in extracurricular activities or offerings. Um, uh, Amy Hawkins and members of this board as well as athletic directors and coaches uh, met as an activities council to talk about what are the barriers, what, what are our, our participation numbers, but what are the barriers or what resources could we provide to overcome those barriers to increase student participation. And they've created a list of, of uh, multiple steps that they'd like to see taken, but uh, top priority brought forward by that group was to offer this activities bus. So that's an example of what I talked about earlier is how are we incorporating into our, our uh, our daily life or how we we do business in the district based on what uh, different committees or groups are, come forward with as ideas so and the whole point is more students will have access to after-school activities so uh, at some point in the fall we'll invite Amy to come and talk about the nuts and bolts and maybe uh, Chris Hall as well our transportation director but the concept is pretty simple uh, we have far too many students we believe 
who don't participate in athletics, uh, uh, band, uh, debate, you, you name the activity because they simply can't get home unless they ride the bus home after school. So the solution is, or potential solution, is to offer an activities bus that leaves at a predictable time every night, 5.30, 5.45, so that coaches and sponsors know, look, I've got to have students out of here by 5.30 so they can catch the bus and get home. So it's just an opportunity to increase. And, and it is, you know, it, it'll be a first uh, attempt, so it is a pilot to a degree. I hate to use the word pilot because it indicates a small uh, trial. We will be doing this in all of our middle school and high schools next year and at the end of the year we'll review uh, how many students ac uh, accessed this and, and did our participation numbers go up or, or did they not. That's a big deal by the way. It, it's mm -hmm. bigger than it probably seems at first glance. You've talked about that a lot Stan and our, our high school coaches and some middle school folks have talked about that a lot. And um, I mean, you take a kid, you look at Hempstead's district, for example, it goes all the way down by the river, doesn't it? In some spots, it goes yeah, it's, cuts way yep. on the north side of the downtown area. That's a, that's a five, six mile jaunt for a kid. And if they don't have transportation, this really creates opportunity. Absolutely, and, and it won't be door to door, as you can imagine, it'll stop and, you know, it'll get folks within a reasonable walking distance of home, but it'll certainly open the doors, we hope, and we believe, to participating. We believe that students who are tied to school outside of the normal school day have a much better experience and tend to, to do better uh, academically. And so an activities bus translates into, we believe, better uh, academic performance and, and better student achievement. Ready to move on? Okay, uh, the second bullet there is launch a challenging behavior team to support K-8 student success. So what does that mean? Currently when we have students who have uh, significant uh, or challenging behaviors, uh, we utilize an AEA behavior support team. I believe there is one, maybe two teams in the entire AEA, I'm hearing one. And the, the wait time for that is anywhere from three to six months from the time the uh, issue is identified. Um, because of some changes in dropout prevention, we were looking at different ways of spending our dropout prevention dollars as well as pulling forward some special education dollars um, to support students. And so what we, what we will be doing is launching our own behavior, uh, challenging behavior team. Uh, we will be hiring folks who have uh, certain expertise outside of the, of the classroom to help teachers, uh, support teachers in, in helping those students be successful in their uh, in the classroom, but also having a, a wide range or continuum of opportunities to help those students. It just simply isn't acceptable for the student who is who is struggling or experiencing those challenging behaviors. And quite honestly, it's difficult for uh, the staff and the other students in the room. And so by controlling or having our own team, the response time will be much shorter in a matter of days uh, as opposed to months. Uh, number two, or three, I'm sorry, pilot the reporting and performance character in middle school to middle school parents. And so eventually we'll move that to the elementary and the high school, potentially all within the 13, 14 school year, but we're going to start the year with middle school, so that's why that is uh, highlighted there and not qu the elementary and the high school yet, because just in case we would uh, uh, have some bumps in the road. Currently all of our uh, elementary schools utilize um, I have my form here somewhere. Different programs, uh, basically I think it's limited to four. Um, character Counts, uh, Leader and Me, Two by Two, and I'm missing another one. Prescott has, Nancy? P PBIS Positive. Uh, so and most of them, quite honestly, utilize two. Uh, all of our schools use two by two to some degree, all 13 of our elementary schools do. Um, and so we wanted to have a system by which we reported out um, that performance. And sometimes that performance has to do with academic performance, the idea of leadership and studying hard and doing your homework and those types of things. But there are other pieces that will be uh, woven into that as well. So uh, the idea that it, that, um, you know, what what is counted matters or what matters is counted uh, mm -hmm. kind of philosophy so the idea that is that we needed to start to report to parents in a in a standardized way um, how we believe their students are performing and how uh, character wise in the um, you, know, you talked about the schools that are using said programs 
I just want to make note that the two by two that is being used is done by volunteers. Mm -hmm. It is not paid for by the district and it is paid for through donations through the community that bring these people and the resources into the schools to do that. So it's it's a it's a volunteer thing that is provided through a community partner. Yep. Yeah, my all three of my children have been through that. In fact, I think my seventh grader would be embarrassed for me to say, but pretty sure she still has Scooby-Doo, her, her dog, somewhere Which is their beginning their program that they started, <laughs> oh, which absolutely. they have way more developed yep, stuff. Yep, it's an ongoing, ongoing program. So that is uh, where we're at with student development. Certainly there, again, we're not reporting out everything that we'll do under student development. We want to highlight sort of the, the bigger ideas, or as Tom would say, the big hairy deal, or the big, you know, the bigger goals. And these are things that we want to, the, to, to say, tell the public, you know, this is televised, this is what you'll see differently next year. This is something you'll experience uh, uh, differently next year. So that's what we're trying to focus on. Um, community engagement. Offer college math courses at Senior and Hempstead. Uh, a group of uh, parents um, uh, approached the district uh, earlier this year with uh, the idea or a request that we look at how their most advanced mathematicians access uh, advanced or college level math courses and was there a way to do that on campus therefore allowing them to take more courses uh, within the high school that sort of thing so uh, that was uh, studied looked into parents were met with uh, the local colleges and universities were uh, given an opportunity sort of to respond to that and uh, we were able to uh, put together a situation where our, I think about 16 or 17 students first semester and 12 or more second semester will gain a college level, advanced college level math uh, coursework and so I believe it's seven hours, seven semester hours of credit they'll attain on, uh, on our campus uh, next year if they take all, both classes. Questions in regard to that one? Okay, number two, provide planning, facilities, and technology support for the inaugural Summer Reading Academy as part of the community-wide third grade reading initiative. Again, it has not been our tradition to open our doors to outside agencies, at least not very common uh, in the summertime. And uh, there is, as you all know, great synergy around the idea of third grade reading initiative and a summer academy and we were approached as to hey you've got these buildings and they're air conditioned and there's technology in there and there's a lunchroom there and a gym there it, could we partner with this and so certainly uh, our portion of that is important there are many other uh, folks bringing uh, things to the table uh, the community foundation um, uh, every child every promise st mark's there's a variety of of, uh, of um, entities who are working hard to make this happen. So I, it's good that the school district can, uh, can play an important role in that. I hope they have the resources to be able to expand it. Yeah. It, it'll, know, with beyond one building. Yeah, it, it'll be interesting. Um, I, I was there, as I mentioned this morning, I was there last week and then back this morning and I know they started with uh, 48 students and I thought, I wonder what um, uh, attendance looks like on Monday of week two, and I think other than a, a handful of students, they, they had very good attendance. So I think uh, we'll see if we'll hopefully that can continue. I know that the weather is not great outside, but uh, the kids were excited this morning. They were doing reading activities this morning and going to the pool this afternoon. Mm -hmm. So it's not just academic, it's about providing kids with other uh, summertime uh, experiences that they may or may not have access to on their own. Um, next year, engage parents and families in a district-wide effort to promote the importance of regular school attendance, also part of the, uh, of the third grade reading initiative. Um, one of the things we've had some pilots going on, and so we'll learn from those pilot uh, um, uh, programs uh, as what are best practices. It's also going to be the focus of our um, public service announcement campaign. If you remember last fall, it was about uh, stop arms and buses and, and uh, uh, Bruce Braley and other folks participated in that. We're going to have a similar campaign this year aimed at parents really encouraging the importance of regular daily attendance in school and how lack of re important regu regular attendance uh, has an extremely detrimental effect on, on students' participation. We also have, and I think it's going to be mentioned a little bit later as well, uh, uh, AmeriCorps VISTA who will be uh, working specifically with um, uh, daily attendance as well, so that's a collaborative effort between the city and uh, and the school district to to uh, hire vistas. I hope that doesn't mean that we will get too heavy-handed 
with parents and families if they want a kid out of school for a day for something that's, that's really no I think it's a, I think it's a matter of, of <clears throat> common sense to a, to a degree I mean looking at patterns are, are there patterns of, of, of you know, am I missing a day a week for the entire year, or am I missing the first week of the month? Or I mean, it's really looking at patterns. It's not it's certainly the intent to be aimed at, you know, uh, and, it, and it's also aimed at parental education. You know, that's going to be uh, um, the, the largest focus is parental education and not uh, the heavy-handed right. you know, just showing just up at the door and throwing your kid in the van and driving well, yeah, to school. Yeah, I, I think it is. It's, it's more helping educate in this case, the parents about what the trade-off is, I, and there's always going to be situations, like you say, Tom, when they need to, when they need to be out. But I think there's, there's also responsibility, in a, you know, and and it's our job to let them know what impact that has over the long run, with trends that lead to higher absentee. And I don't know that everybody necessarily connects the dots mm -hmm. with respect mm -hmm. to that to know Absolutely. how it impacts student achievement and the ability of our teachers and. Administrators and others to really kind of move that that young person through our through our district. And I, so you'll notice in the like one of the things we would look for is kids who miss kids who miss more than ten days of school in the first thirty days of school. I mean that's not just taking your kid out one day or that's not that family gathering that might be important for you. But you know if you're starting your school year out in the first thirty days and you've missed a third of it. That's someone that we want to have a conversation with right. to see if there's an appropriate intervention. Yeah. Just so everybody under, understands at a building level, I mean, we've, Tammy and I have talked about this, stories of, of occasionally at the building level, mm -hmm. parents exhibiting concerns that it was difficult to uh, make sure that they could get their kid out of class because they had a family event going on without having exhibited a, a pattern of Mm -hmm. of uh, any kind of, you know, absenteeism. So I just hope that yeah. it's clear that this does not give carte blanche to be heavy-handed and interfere with the sanctity of the family, because I'm a family guy. I have families, you know, I, I do understand, I totally understand the attendance thing, I get that. But when it's all said and done, you know, the families need to be able to navigate the school district as well for their kids when it comes to certain events, certain things going on in their families. Tom, I You'll think, go ahead. From what I've understood, and because I agree with you on that, but it's more geared towards, like Lynn was saying, parents that just don't get up with their kids and right. get them to school. Mm -hmm. yep. And for whatever reason, those kids don't know because they don't have the parental guidance to say you need to go to school. Right. Time goes by, it's 11 o'clock and yep. nobody said, you know, yep. why aren't you in school? So I think it's more geared for, you know, chronic absenteeism um, mm -hmm. and, and to know why. And it's in, at the early edu you know, early yeah. childhood ages, it's just as important. In our, in our focus, you'll, you'll see in the Lyme Green, it says parents will be educated on why attendance matters, but it's also, our focus will be on initially, how do we help? You know, what resources are available? What are things that, that, that either we or the community are, are what, what's a way, what's the problem? And is there a way we can help you alleviate uh, uh, that issue and, and get your uh, child to school on time? And it is as much a matter of, of tardiness as it is actual missing whole days. I mean, we have, you know, some families who the time doesn't, it's not as much of a focus. And so being a half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour late, most days it seems to be acceptable because they're in school every day. Well, if you miss your first hour or most of your first hour every day, there, there's still uh, a lack there, especially if it's, you know, uh, reading time or something like that. Um, implement the state METS grant to better prepare special education students to be college and career ready. Uh, focus will be on decreasing dropouts and increasing employability of special education students. Um, and that is, mo um, METS stands, where I'd write it down, a model employment transition site. So I believe we are one of two uh, places in the, in the state of Iowa that has this grant to, to focus on helping our, our students uh, make that transition, as our, um, our special education students in particular make that transition either to college or, or a career. So 
uh, that'll be uh, provide a level of service uh, to those students. And then partner with the City of Dubuque and the Community Foundation of Greater Dubuque and utilize AmeriCorps VISTA volunteers to m implement joint priorities. So there are um, uh, three VISTA staff members that were funded to implement initiatives of the third grade reading campaign. Those are jointly uh, written uh, requests or grants. Um, so again, it just goes to the collaboration of how we as, as entities, in this case the, the city and the Community Foundation of Greater Dubuque are working together to bring resources to uh, our students um, that will help them be more successful. Effective resource management, uh, we've talked about this uh, at, uh, at length. Um, update 59 computer labs and add over 1,000 tablets. That number will be uh, 1,200. New lab uh, furniture and enhanced wireless access across the district through the technology plan. So we planned it. We've set aside the resources. The, the board has approved the use of $3.5 million worth of one cent sales tax dollars to give us the ability to execute this plan or to implement this plan. Uh, and the outcome will be students will see uh, or use significantly more technology in classrooms that are designed to, uh, to accommodate that use. Um, at the middle school and high school level and particularly, there will be much greater access to technology. Some of that will be in place the very first day of school and some of that will be staged over the first several months uh, as we make purchases or wire labs or uh, the furniture comes in. You know, it's interesting, you can order all the technology you want and have it in about three or four days, <laughs> order furniture and it's a two month wait. <laughs> so you know, there's some of those things are, are uh, uh, they, that will all happen throughout the course of the year. Most of it will happen uh, at the very early stages of the year. Um, Enhanced facilities with a priority on the Hempstead renovation, Kennedy renovation, and others. So new learning spaces will better meet facility uh, needs for educating students. So again, that's the that's the, the, the long-term plan for our, the one cent uh, sales tax uh, dollars and how we utilize those dollars that uh, we thankfully the taxpayers voted for. I believe we've had almost 10 years now and we've done some phenomenal things for the for the kids and, and you can continue down that path. And then uh, uh, Kevin's favorite, launch a new finance system on July 1st, 24-7 uh, <laughs> access to up-to-date information from anywhere with an internet access. So moving into a much more uh, uh, accessible, reliable, and up-to-date finance system. Kevin, I don't know if you want to throw anything on that. User-friendly, increased greatly over the past system. So move, moving forward, and you know, and it's all those behind-the-scenes things. We, we tend to focus on what's in it for for kids and parents, but there are the realities of having to run a, a business operation that has 1,700 employees and a you know well over 100 million dollar budget, and so keeping our technologies and our systems up to date there is is important as well. And how does that implement student achievement? It implements student achievement because we can be more effective with our allocation of resources and make sure that we are utilizing them, uh, as many of those dollars as, as possible in an efficient and effective way to in, you know, increase uh, education experiences. Employee excellence. So expand the 21st century learning groups to 72 secondary teachers. These are the teachers who will be going through uh, multi-day uh, days of training, much of which happens in site embedded into their classroom. So it's not a matter of they're being pulled from the classroom, but these are the 72 teachers who will, will be receiving uh, tablet access and card access. Um, our goal is to have at least one per house at the middle school and the remainder being uh, at the high school. So it's an opportunity to utilize um, uh, the technology that we're purchasing. We know that purchasing the technology is obviously just the first step. It's the how does life look differently for, for kids? How do they experience, how does their educational experience change because they've had the technology? And so that comes with the professional development uh, requirement for, for our staff. So it'll be 72, uh, moving the group to 72 or expanding 72 next year and then the following year I believe we have on tap for 50 or so or and so we'll continue down that process until we get everybody uh, through that training. And just in case somebody's struggling <clears throat> with the math, <laughs> because we know we that 72 represents, you know, less than 10 percent of probably our staff. We, we talked about how you yep. start to populate buildings and departments with uh, technology yep. champions in addition to what our 
uh, technology coaches do so that there's a resource for uh, teachers who perhaps have not been a part of the first couple of uh, uh, classes, if you may, to be able to make sure they're they're benefiting from uh, technology. Absolutely. Well. We'll continue to move forward with technology professional development for yeah. all teachers provided by our technology coaches, which we have one in every building. But to give you an idea of the scope, you look at 72, and that's a great question because we have 850 teachers, and so does that, is it just a drop in the bucket? But if I'm a middle school student at Roosevelt, Jefferson, or Washington, and I'll use Roosevelt as an example, I currently have two labs, okay? So the opportunity to utilize computers at Roosevelt is the number of teachers there by two labs and a handful of computers in the back of classrooms. Next year there will be, and there's roughly 120 students in a house, so next year there will be a lab with 30 uh, computers in it for that 120 students and there will be a cart in each house and that cart will have a number of computers in 25 to 30 um, and so now I have 60 user endpoints <coughs> in a house with 120 students. So you can see it's not an all day everything, it's certainly not one to one, but the goal is, is as a teacher has need to access that technology, it's available to them. So we have moved it from two opportunities in the entire, bis uh, entire building to two opportunities in every house. Uh, and that same will play itself out at, uh, at um, uh, Jefferson and Washington. At the high school, um, each department uh, nine departments. Each department will have a lab assigned to them, so the foreign language, the math, the science. So they'll have their department lab, and then they'll have other teachers uh, who are trained to use the uh, the technology. So our hope is to get um, more, uh, to impact as many students as possible with technology on a daily or weekly basis. When we move into year two, that 50 will be focused almost entirely at the high school. Um, because we'll be at the scenario that I mentioned at the, at the middle school, which is, is pretty adequate. Now we we're adding more to the high school. So we really are in a two year period making uh, significant uh, strides in, in access uh, for technology for students. And then the, the end goal uh, four years out is to have enough teachers through this training, enough tablets, both previously purchased and newly purchased, to go to a, a one to one scenario uh, at the high school level. So. We can't get there overnight, but we certainly are making significant movement uh, forward there. Okay. Uh, begin implementation of the Iowa Teacher Quality Initiatives based on the state reform measures, including peer review and teacher leadership opportunities. We believe uh, that uh, teacher leadership is, is important in Dubuque. It has been for many years. We're kind of ahead of the state curve there with our technology coaches and our instructional coaches and some of our other teachers on special assignment. So we want to move forward with the, these initiatives based on the state reform, um, partially because we, we've already been down that path. We want to continue to push that forward. Um, and partially because when the funding, there's additional funding available to schools who, who meet uh, some of these requirements and so we will want to be aggressive in attaining that additional funding if it meets the needs of our school district as, as much as potentially $300 per student with uh, 10,000 students that math's pretty, pretty easy to do. That's not something that we can ignore so we'll want to make sure that we are uh, pushing uh, on, be on the cutting edge of that so that when those dollars become available we can uh, capitalize on, on that. Is that a 14-15 event where those dollars become available? I, yes, I, so districts will apply and I can't remember the total number of dollars that they allocated at the state level for that, do you remember Kevin? There, there, there are three different, it's staged over three years and so we would like to be part of that first year initiative right. if we can and so looking at that guidance which is familiar with the legislative uh, process, th they put it out and it's the guidance that comes out over the next three, four, five months that really has the detail. So we'll be looking for that guidance and, and trying to, uh, to uh, coordinate our programming to meet that guidance so that we can yeah. capitalize on those dollars. Okay. Uh, and then an interesting uh, new grant, the STEP grant, uh, it will be used to train 612 uh, staff on issues surrounding sexual violence uh, um, and so that is, a, it's relatively brief training, it's a small training that we're doing to do through a grant but it is uh, kind of in the, in the uh, realm of um, uh, bullying and harassment but in this case uh, focused uh, specifically on uh, um, dating violence and, and those types of issues. So again, creating an, an employee an excellent employee uh, uh, workforce.
Uh, expanding, uh, or okay, I've moved on to student achievement. So expanding alternative education support with additional life coach, tech coach, and counselor at the ALC Connect and launch a new 10th grade at risk program. I mentioned earlier that we were looking at the challenging behavior team. Well, this is another way that we are going to be using uh, some dollars from our dropout prevention fund. Um, as we talked about earlier in the year, the state changed some of those requirements and so we had to uh, adjust how we spent uh, uh, dropout uh, prevention dollars. You also know that we have a relatively strong uh, graduation rate when compared to cities of our size nationally and, and in Iowa, but it's not good enough. I mean, we still have uh, far too many of our students who don't make it to graduation. So here's a, a way that we're going to, uh, that in partnership with our um, with our dropout prevention programs that are always in, already in place and some of the outreach things that, that Shirley's been working on, we'll hopefully see an increase in not only student achievement but in our graduation rate, which is an important uh, number for us. Um, implement a new eighth grade digital literacy, digital literacy curriculum. So you've heard me talk, I can't say that five times too quick. So you've heard me talk about uh, the, the technology labs in each house and you've heard me talk about the uh, the tablet and the carts in each house. Well, in addition to that, we are putting in uh, one uh, room or two rooms. Is it two rooms at Roosevelt, Kevin? Three. Three at Roosevelt, two, two, two at each of the others. Designed specifically for digital literacy curriculum and what does that mean? So you follow on the light green there, eighth graders will gain new collaboration, presentation and communication skills needed to prepare them for high school and beyond. So how do I use technology to collaborate? How do I use technology to make presentations? Um, most of the eighth graders after next year won't do a simple PowerPoint the way I'm doing it. They'll have bells and whistles and probably do a Prezi and you know I'll have to take that class so I can <laughs> continue to yeah. present to the board dazzle you. So that's another opportunity where we'll ensure all of our students have access to technology at the eighth grade level. Uh, integrate the common core with response to intervention to identify and res uh, respond to the learning and behavior challenges. So it, this is a process by which we if you remember on the uh, strategic plan, and I should have handed out copies of the plan, one of the things we have talked about is how do we individualize education uh, for all students and at all levels. And so this response uh, to intervention is one way that we do that. Um, an outcome should be fewer of our students um, ending up entitled in special education classes. It should allow us to individualize uh, our response to the needs in helping those students before they become identified. Uh, and find themselves uh, in a special education environment. So it is sort of that mid-step of going from this is a struggling student potentially headed towards special education. Well, what, how do we back up and, and go through a very systematic process to help these students um, before, they, before they find themselves uh, uh, identified as a special education student? So the outcome will be uh, lower numbers in special education. Oh, and I guess that was my last slide. So I can certainly back up to any of those uh, goal areas, but uh, what we wanted to present tonight was what have we done this year, and again that focuses a lot on planning, but more specifically, what are we going to do next year? What's the implementation piece? We need to move from research to implementation, and so every one of these things will happen next year, and we will report on to, out to you next year what that success is with those programs. That's all I, yes. I, I've got some comments and I guess I wanted to kind of take us back to the board when we talked about sure. uh, the strategic planning last fall and I, I guess I would say I like this process. I think I like where we've, that we've got a plan. I like the way that it's reporting and I just wanted to go through some, some of the themes we talked about last year and you know how those may or may not be in our current plan. One of the themes from last year was empowering the teacher-student relationship and mm -hmm. how can we free up teachers from things administratively or whatever they're doing, things that may not have been initiatives five years ago that aren't as effective as we thought they'd be, how do we free those teachers up from some of those programs? We, I think the term we used was weeding the garden. Mm -hmm. And so that was a theme that didn't make it onto our, our board here, but was something we talked about last year, or last fall. We talked about activities and the importance of activities and 
I can tell the rest of the board that uh, Amy Hawkins and Cheryl Warner, one of the things they did is they sent out a questionnaire and an email to all of the activity leaders in the district, got feedback, started saying, okay, these things are done, these things are being done, these things we're working on, and was a good first step mm -hmm. as far as moving that process forward. I guess I still have, I've pressed Cheryl on the fact that, you know, we just don't seem to have the numbers in band, vocal music, and some of those things that some of our other <coughs> comparable districts do, and how do we get the resources, whether mm -hmm. that's additional people or time in the calendar to have 270 people in the band like a lot of the NBC schools do. Um, but that's, you know, we're making progress with that. We talked about innovation, and I think uh, we're seeing a lot of examples of that. The technology plan hopefully will be something uh, that helps lead towards innovation. Uh, efficient resource management, I think of all the things we're doing, I'm the most pleased with how we're managing our resources, both human resources and financial resources, the capital plan for the, for the buildings. I, th I think I'm very happy with where we're at on that. We talked about partnering and community engagement, and while you shared examples, well, we talked about partnering and community engagement, and I think at the forum level we're doing that. One of the concerns I had is we talked a little, a lot about bottom up. How do we mm -hmm. engage the people at the building level, from the custodians to the administrators to the teachers, to live the strategic plan? And in all the, pretty much all the examples you talked about here today, they were kind of forum level <laughs> initiatives going down. There weren't a lot of building level initiatives coming up of how, how is how is T.J. Potts <coughs> living the strategic plan at, mm -hmm. at Kennedy Elementary School. So that, I mean, I'm just throwing this out sure. as, as one person's thoughts, yep. you know, take them for what they were. I mean, there may be six people that think I'm crazy here, we, but, we, uh, George but, that, but those were kind of some of the things that, uh, at least, <laughs> um, that you know struck me and yeah. I think getting getting to when I'll know that we're really succeeding in a strategic plan when I when I see the people at the building level saying here's how we're part here's how the custodians at X school are partnering with the community to do a better job at what they do or to help student development and yeah. so that yeah. those are yeah, on that absolutely. point I will let you know that in all of the buildings that I've been in and I've been in several on either it's in the it usually it's like in the teacher's workroom or area that strategic plan is blown up as big as um, the posters up on the wall over there so they're looking at it the principals are talking about it well, everything that they and do it, so I, i'm just so, sharing with you yeah. that that part i know is happening so i know that that is a working document that i see in the building it is and, and so I, I know you haven't had a chance to, to look at this book because i just i just gave it you just got it tonight so take a look at that and know that that's how we ended our district leadership this year and how we'll, we'll begin our, our our year next year and some of the things we'll talk about when we do a, an all staff gathering in August is how do we pull that up or how do you push that up if you're somebody out there with a good idea you know this 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 book poke the box and you know I know that there'll be some it, it's it, it's it takes a little bit of a leap of faith to hand that out to people and say this is how we want you to operate because it's a lot easier not to do it that way but I, I believe and I think the board believes and from what you're saying that, that that's not what they uh, believe and so that this is so this year was was about getting a larger plan which did come primarily from from this group but as we move forward in implementation we do not only request but we expect that leaders of all levels uh, push forward those ideas and that leaders at all levels be receptive to the fact that people are going to have uh, different ideas, opinions, and, and hopefully have creative thoughts on how we continue to improve. But I, I appreciate that. Well, and, and the, last, the last point I think I want to make is another big theme that we talked about last fall was character development mm -hmm. programming. And, and we get, you know, sliced up into character development to behavior mm -hmm. traits to leadership development. And I, you know, the two by two programs that are going on and there's, and there's so many programs going on within the community that are stressing character development. I really think that is something that having a great, that we could really be known for in the Dubuque Community School District is our character development programs and our, especially our elementary schools. And I know we have some schools that I've been in that have just tremendous programs and some of them mix a number of these types of programs. But 
Um, getting that to a point where it's, you know, and I, I struggle between, you know, letting each principal do their own thing, having something that has some consistency, and I know we're probably taking a look at that, seeing what works and what doesn't work, but that character development, I think, is something that we all agreed as a board was a very important piece of the strategic plan, even though it doesn't say character development per se in the no. language, but. Absolutely. I, I We've had that, that same conversation because we have staffs who have are very invested in their particular their program, program. And, and that's really to me the key that there's that buy-in on the implementation level by the by the <coughs> teacher I mean some of these buildings I mean it's you talk about buy-in from the doesn't matter if it's food service custodian teacher principal and a variety of programs you know as long as there there's that implementation and that buy-in from the staff and so I, I too struggle with the how much of that should be this is what you should do versus this is the goal and and get to the goal and uh, I think where we kind of are trying to figure out how to juggle that is with the character development but I, but I sense that there you know there's some core tenets and character yep. whatever you want to call it the program character development that are common in all of them mm -hmm. and I think one of the advantages for us in our district is to is to engage and mobilize in all of our buildings um, that support that buy-in I, I frankly don't care how they get there I care that they get there and um, so I, I, I'm more along the lines of uh, setting the expectation that this happens how they know their staff they know their students they know their parent you know groups better than anybody at, at, at this table so why not have them pick the program that you know that obviously that we vetted and have seen working in our in our uh, in our buildings? Let them pick and choose those that, that are going to again are going to resonate best with the uh, mm -hmm. with the people that they're serving. And I, and I you know what we don't what isn't negotiable is that that is an initiative of ours and a, and a yep. goal of ours. How how they get there, I'm less concerned with just the fact that they they bought into it and they're and they're. The outcomes are exactly what yeah. we expect. And the other thing I would like to, for us to look into down the road is is what impact. Uh, my personal belief is, but I don't know that how we would pull the data is that extracurricular at the secondary level is is instrumental in character development. I mean, as far as uh, leadership and and work ethic and and teamwork and, and communication with with people all towards the accomplishment of a common goal so you know I think at the elementary we've got some pretty specific programming it's different but it's specific at the secondary level I don't know that we have specific programs as much as we count on uh, our, a lot of our co-curricular extracurricular activities and that's why I think it's so vital that those numbers come up because I think that it doesn't matter if your work ethic is around learning to play uh, the violin or learning to, to throw a baseball it, a lot of those those core tenets are what will make them successful adults is uh, I've got to do it every day I've got to be dedicated and I've got to I've got to pay attention to the details I can't just you know a lot of those pieces are, are you know whether I'm playing in part of an orchestra or whether I'm playing in part of a 11 people on a football field th those issues um, are pretty important to character development as well if I can offer a board salute Tom Barton, who got all those tickets for the uh, Barry Manilow concert, and, and Cheryl uh, Cheryl Werner for uh, orchestrating the bus trips. Her getting 250 people to Cedar Rapids is like herding cats. But I did take advantage of the of the concert. Went down with my family, and one of the things Barry Manilow said from stage was that. Uh, and he he went to the worst high school in America in Brooklyn, New York, and that uh, he had a choice between going into sports, but he said he wasn't a good athlete, going into a gang, and he, he wasn't a good fighter, <laughs> or, or joining the orchestra. And he said uh, joining the high school orchestra is what made his, uh, his life. So I, I, I think there's something to be said for that. I will have to say, um in conversations that I've had with Stan, I was very glad to hear him say that it is going to be a year of doing mm -hmm. this coming year because I am, I for one, get very frustrated and if, if I've learned one thing on being the, on the school board is it's very frustrating at how slow anything gets done because everything has to have 
data to back it up. And I am so sick of having to have data to back everything up. I want to be able to see some action happen. And let's see if, you know, go back to what we said at the very beginning, if you all, other six people remember, we said, it's okay to try something and it doesn't work. Sure. And I really want us to be able to see that happen. On my list. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I stole your thumb. I'm sorry. That was but, one of them. But to I, I just, I, I really, um, I really want to see the action and, and, and you've laid it out. And so I'm excited to see what next year is going to bring because I want to see this happening. But don't get, st it's got to keep going. You yeah. know? We can't get stuck with just this because if we all know, there's lots of new things coming yep. out. We got to be able to fit it in and just try. Just try these things. So you'll notice on the strategic plan on the front it says a year of planning and on the back it says a year of implementation. Now hopefully going forward they're all years of both. In other words, we won't just implement next year. We'll still be planning because the following year we'll want to be implementing that and so you get into a cycle of doing both. It was important for me quite honestly as, as new in this role to have a year uh, for planning purposes to, to get everybody sort of uh, at least to consensus on strategic plan and the technology plan and facilities plan so that we're moving together purposefully. And so I think uh, there were certainly some doing this year, but it was more heavily on the planning. And as we get into uh, that rotation, hopefully it's a, it's a better mix of both planning for upcoming years, but also that really seeable, feelable implementation so that uh, it, it's not that cycle of, of, of and, planning. And, you know, again, I think culture is so important. And, and uh, you know, I think there's no better example for the extracurricular culture than, you know, Rick's old stomping grounds up there, up there at senior high school. I think, uh, you know, there's a vibe around that campus right now that's very, very positive. You know, when I read the monthly newsletters or go to a basketball game or go to a football game, I thought the graduation was spectacular. Um, there's a tremendous vibe um, with those kids, and, and you know, again, I think Rick and, and the staff up there. Um, deserve a lot of credit and I guess probably the basketball team too but uh, um, you know it, it's there's something special up there and, and that's neat and, and uh, it you feel it when you when you uh, get around them absolutely and I think both of our high schools are, are headed in that in that direction certainly the good things I'm not knocking him no I understand <laughs> no I, I, understand. I understand and you know as a former high school principal and, and Rick and, and David you know we all certainly know that uh, in that when your year starts off on a positive note because people are being <coughs> successful for whatever reason, it just seems to bring the whole school along in right. a positive way. But it doesn't matter if it's a football team, the volleyball team, the school play, school play whatever it is. And if they all are being successful, then you're really yeah. on a roll because you've got an awful lot of kids involved in things in which they feel connected to the school well, and feel successful. Well, that's where you want the success to be if, it's, if you're going to have it from here. You know, from the administrators, you know, all the, all of you, then it'll go down. You know, you want it to. You got, it's got to be everywhere. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. This is the first time I recall this much conversation about school activities and extracurriculars. I am thrilled. I think we see examples every day of how building a team in, in our adult lives. I mean, again. Talk go back to the uh, third grade reading in the summer school. That's all about because people know how to communicate and build a team. No one entity did it. A variety of entities came together. So if we can teach our, our kids that at a young age and reinforce that through high school, it, it just leads to better things when they're adults and, and better accomplishment and the ability to, to collaborate and work together. Well, I just want to take a moment. I, I want to congratulate the superintendent because I really do think uh, in the short time that he's been here, it would have been uh, disastrous in my mind if he had started implementing right out of the chute. Um, I think it's important that that everyone in the district, all the stakeholders in the district, understand that it's not ready, shoot, aim. Um, we've we've got to put some thought to it. I share your impatience around that, but you know the culture we're creating is really one that should be contrary to that. I mean, we we know there are certain things. They're not a lot. There are certain things that do require um, some some in-depth study, but you know, as we talked about, we, we're going to create a culture here where we're going to encourage people to try new things and to not be concerned with failure. The challenge, and, and I, I think that in talking with Stan, um, you know, 
we're looking forward to the beginning of the school year, the chance to bring all of the, the team together so they hear a common message uh, about, you know, how it's different. Uh, because that will be that will be a, a milestone and kind of an area where we collectively kind of bury the stake and say, you know, going forward, this is different. But as administrators, and particularly in this building, it's a new world because we're going to ask a lot of questions. We're going to ask people to be engaged. We're asking them to think, uh, you know, in a different way. And, mm -hmm. and that's going to force us in this building to approach that with a whole new you know, fresh, open-mindedness, I think. Um, there's no silly questions. There's no silly ideas. We've got to embrace each and every one of them. We won't do each and every one of them, but we've got to create a way, and I know that's paramount to what you're trying to do, Stan, is create that culture where people know they can bring those forward. They buy into the, um, they buy into the strategic plan in terms of the outcomes. That's what we want. And so once you, that vibe you talk about, I see that in elementary schools, I see that in the middle schools, not across the board, that's our goal. That, that's our aspirational goal is to see that everywhere. We see pockets of it. So we know that that, that exists out there and we know it's being, it's being nurtured and it's being fed. The key is how do we map that across the whole district? I think a solid strategic plan where everybody can can see the outcomes, they can see the role they play, and know the impact that they can have on it is a, is a big thing. This is a good start. I think everybody will agree. This is a good start. Uh, this, isn't, this isn't inclusive of everything that gets done next year, but certainly it is some of the ones that I think jump off the page that we've talked about and that you can directly tie to, to the strategic plan. And I think once you get that kind of that kind of color and, and light shown on a, a plan like this, that's where people get behind it. I think that's where people get excited, they get energized, they get engaged. That's where the fun really starts. Absolutely. I and, I, and that's where everybody around in this building and across the district really ought to be, be excited and we ought to be prepared to embrace that excitement as we kick off the, the new school year. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you. I, I agree. I think that to not have a, to, to be purposeful calls us to have a strategic plan. But once we get past that, I mean, clearly the the eyes of the district will be on us. I mean, was that just what Stan said to get to be the superintendent? Or is this what we're going to still be doing in four years and five years and, and on and on, hopefully? Um, so that is the mode of which we're going to operate uh, from here on out. Any other comments? Is this the other item section, or are we on to the strategic plan? Are we just no, any other comments on the strategic plan? Great. So thank you, Stan and staff. Mm -hmm. I have another item. So do I. So do I. You go first. Who goes first? Me? You. Um, I, along with many in the community, uh, recently learned that you know we, the city once again won the American Cities Award, and I um, certainly applaud that outcome and people are very excited. But I think one of the things that has been somewhat underreported is the district's significant in involvement in that plan. And I just want to take a moment and, and herald the fact that the district, um, you know, that, that award was given largely because of a plan to improve third grade reading. And our district, I know, was involved greatly in the creation of that plan and will be <laughs> very much in the forefront of the implementation of that plan. And I just think that you know, as much as we celebrate the city winning it, yeah, it's a collective. A lot of people contributed to it, but the district did their part big time. And I just want to make sure that that doesn't get forgotten and lost. So I appreciate and, apl and applaud the district's efforts to, to bring that once again to, to Dubuque. Thank you. George? Yeah, I, I had a little comment about what goes on in the summer with education, and we recently, uh, Governor Brand said was in the news about wanting to move the start date back on uh, schools. Um, I don't know. I think it's meant universally as a bad idea from people that are involved in education and from parents. And um, and I, I guess I want to stress that there's a lot of education that goes on in the summer. Just because school gets out, that doesn't mean education stops. And so I just get, I'm kind of on Facebook monitoring my kids, doing things, but just seeing the things that come across that of educational programs going on in the summer. I just like to touch on a few. This isn't a complete list, but the Dubuque Public Library reading programs. Girl Scout, my daughter, we're out at Girl Scout summer camp at Little Cloud. 
UD for Kids is going on, the Every Child, Every Promise program with the city at Audubon School for reading for uh, kids that, uh, to help uh, get on track with reading. We've got a whole slew of Dubuque Leisure Services program, the Grandview Gallup, over 200 elementary school kids running in that uh, a couple weeks ago. Dubuque Y has a whole set of programs, including a Girls on the Run program, which talks about, you know, many of these problem, programs not only deal with activities and education, but also deal with character, and that's one of those that involves, has a big character component. The Dubuque Colts are off, and the Colt Cadets, Dubuque Girls Independent Softball League, Laura Sports Camp, and Farrell's Fitness Club. Yeah. So several of us are involved with at Farrell's. But they have a teen program going on this summer, fitness, education, nutrition, and character. And I think one of the challenges is a lot of these programs go on. Some of these programs involve costs and transportation and logistics. And when we talk about engaging the community, community partnerships, some of that has got to be how can we, how can we I'll make it so that kids that don't have the logistics, don't have the fee, that they need to pay, don't have the transportation, can take part in many of these activities that a great majority of our community can. And, you know, this is a list of 10 or 12 programs, but I mean, there are literally hundreds of programs going on. And one of our challenges, one of our community's challenges, is how can we make these programs available to all kids? So, a lot of education, a lot of programming goes on in the summer, it just doesn't go on in front of a teacher. But. And I, I would just say, all kids, and I appreciate that, but all kids doesn't necessarily mean just money. Sometimes there's learning difficulties or behavioral issues. Whatever and, those barriers are, and, we need and, to try to find ways. And I ways think that to. needs to be uh, factored in as well. Mm -hmm. So that's my two cents. Thank you. Anything else? <clears throat> I have one other item that needs uh, some action. Uh, I've got a re I've got a letter. Excuse me from Keith Ray the new president and CEO of the Dubuque Area uh, Convention and Visitors Bureau, a request <clears throat> from the newly formed board. Um, they, are, they are asking that the Dubuque Community School Board appoint one of their members to the new uh, advisory committee that will serve underneath the board of the Convention and Visitors Bureau. This is a 25-person group made up of representatives of local government, uh, travel industry, and the tri-state area. They meet every other month starting on July 11th at noon in the chamber boardroom. Uh, we're looking for representation from the school board to help with that. I'll do it if you want. That one? Okay, great. I'm on, I'm on that board, but I'm not on the advisory committee, so. I move that the Board of Education appoint Matt Strelo to the Dubuque Visitors and Convention Bureau Advisory Board. Second. Moved and seconded to appoint Mr. Strelo as, uh, as a representative to the Barton's Convention of for Visitors Bureau Advisory Committee. <laughs> All in favor? Discussion? <laughs> Discussion? Uh, I don't know. We, these guys should have stopped me. That, we could have been done by now. Have we seen his last three tax returns? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> all in quick, all in favor before we lose our nominee. Aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> Motion carries. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Matt. Is there anything else? Carry none, we are adjourned. <laughs>